Everyone's favourite monk, Ikiguri, has lucked his way through and survived every phase of Blue Lock so far, which leads to the question, how will he survive the NEL program? We know that Ego anticipates to only have 23 of the remaining 46 characters for the U20 World Cup, and so half the characters won't make it to the final roster. In the previous arcs, you could get carried by your teammates, like how we see Team Z carry him in the first selection, and Shido later on. Which raises the question, if Ikiguri will actually make it through. Because unlike before, you can't get carried by your teammates, as your salary and value is based off your individual performance in the matches. So with that being said, will he actually survive? And the answer is yes. He always makes it through, just barely. He was ranked 300th, barely made the first selection, was on the final selection team, and barely made the U20 bench. He consistently finds a way to survive, and this time will be no exception. I'm fairly confident that he will end up with a 23rd highest salary, and barely making the U20 world team. If you didn't know, Ikiguri is the author's second favourite character, after Nagi, and he won't eliminate him just yet, as he does like his comedic relief character a lot. But how will he believably make it through, considering his skill level? Contrary to what many people believe, he isn't absolutely horrible, and actively improved since the first selection. With both his 2v2 match against Ryo and Kunigami, and his third selection ending off screen, we don't get a full grasp of how much he improved. We do know he still sucked in both matches, but he also at least tried to actively contribute to their victories. While everyone else has an actual talent, Ikiguru's is just his unyielding spirit, which isn't really a physical talent like the rest. Even then, he was not the worst on the team, like at least he did something and actively improved as the games went on. Compare him to Narahaya or Imamaru, who didn't do anything in any of the four matches. If you can't remember what he did in the first arc, let me remind you. He was the one to assist Kuon's first goal, but more importantly, his contribution in the Team V match. In the match, we see him play primarily as a centre back against Nagi, where we see him stop Team V's original play. Even later on, we see him stop Nagi by tanking the shot in the face, and we also see him stop him again off screen. Even when he doesn't stop Nagi, he gives it his heart and soul to at least try, as we see him dive to stop Nagi's trap at the goals, and the play after Ryo's free kick. He is bad, but he still managed to stop Nagi multiple times, and showed he can do something, more than just get carried by Team Z. In his 2v2, we do see him enter flow and use a militia foul against Ryo, which is slight and shouldn't be praised, but he still actively tried in the match. Similarly, in the third selection, he tried linking up with Rin and Shido, and was the reason Rin could take the ball off Yuki. Everyone knows he is a useless monk, and worse than players like Rin, Izugi, and Naki, but at the end of the day, he still performs better than others, and displayed some value as a player. As the worst player in Bastard Munich, his chances of joining the team are slim, and with two and a half games finished, his time is running out, and his chance of joining the team decreasing. We know you need to play a game to get a value from a team, so unless he makes it into the PXG game, he won't make the final 23. What's even worse for him is that other fodder characters like Darai and Hayate get to play 3 games, and so the salary will constantly improve, and for the monk to get a higher salary, he must not just play a singular match, but play out of his mind to exceed their value, which is a tough task. And it's not just those two he needs to beat, as other teams continuously play more, the other blue lock players will start getting values. And if my prediction that all 46 players will end up getting a salary, then he will need to go god mode to have a higher value than half the other players in a singular game. Assuming Igaguri does not get subbed in, in the Ubers match, then his only shot is the PXG match, but there is no guarantee he will even be a starter. But I guarantee he will play in the match to fulfil the Naked King prophecy, with Kaiser being alone with the 10 other blue lock players, which also means Kiora fans will be happy. Since Bastard typically have a 4-4-2 formation, then we can guess where the plays will end up. Personally, the offensive side of the field will likely be Isagi, Kunigami, Kaiser, and Grimm's replacement, then Hiro replacing Ness as the midfielder and Raichi as the defensive midfielder. Yuki, Karuna, and Tepe will unlikely play as centre backs and will likely be the full backs, with maybe Yuki being the replacement for Grimm. The main position and most likely position Ikiguri could play is as a centre back, which isn't a surprise as that was his best position in the Team V game. Menza and Birkenstock are both fairly fodder characters, but the scary thing about them is their stats, as they both have values 84 and 86. 
For reference, Corona only has 83 and Yuki only has 84. So Igaguri getting subbed in over the other center backs wouldn't make much sense as their stats are significantly better. But if he did, it would likely be Menza. One key thing about Igaguri is his luck factor, where he'll find a way to sub in and get a good salary. Honestly, I'm not sure how he'll sub in, and the only way I can think of is if one of the center backs gets injured from Shido by stopping his goal, which opens an opportunity for Igaguri to sub in. But maybe there's another way he can get subbed in. I'd argue a lot of people haven't seen this, but at the extra chapter in Volume 20, we learn more about the Blue Lock TV program, with the most intriguing part being the third point, the voting support system. And what's interesting is that fans can support a player and potentially change their fate, and influence the team's decision and potentially get them subbed in. We already saw Isagi get subbed in due to popularity, instead of Yuki, and with Igaguri being a character who's actively trying to promote himself out of the game, his luck factor may kick in and fans vote him so he gets subbed in. Since Barca and Munich have 20 days until the next match, he'll have more time to train and potentially get high enough stats to replace the other center backs. We've already seen other Barca players improve their stats over the span of 10 to 20 days. And so Ikuguri could likely hit the 80 range and get subbed in before the next PXG match. In chapter 230, we do see Isagi demand Hiyori to play. And if they win the Ubers match, then no one may trust his choice if Isagi ever asks for Ikuguri to play. And so he may sub in if Isagi can figure out a way to utilize Ikuguri into a plan to help win against PXG. Otherwise, I'm not sure how he can reasonably get subbed in, so assuming he gets subbed in, how can he get a salary high enough to make the top 23? As we know, he transfers Militia Foul, which is a technique which may help him in game. However, the biggest problem with this tactic is that it may increase his chance of winning, but it won't increase his value as a player. Getting a foul out of an opponent will not make a team go, hey, I want this player. Even if he perfected it and can recreate it, that even refs and VAR can't detect, he has to do more to get in the top 23. The most likely way I see him getting a good salary is from Shido. Although Shido and Kunigami are likely the two rivals in the match, I'm certain that Ikiguri will also contribute to his defeat. For example, Ikiguri's militia could be used on Shido, giving him a potential yellow card, or worst case, a red card, which will send him off. If he did get a yellow, he may become less violent and sporadic, which could make stopping him a bit easier for the team. That being said, I think it's more likely that Ikiguri stops him, akin to the first selection, and how he stops Nagi, where he did so by fully committing to diving and blocking all his shots. Shido is an extremely skillful shooter and powerful too, and so stopping him multiple times would give him a value actually worthy of the top 23. Ikiguri is resilient too, and so I'm guessing he is more likely to absorb the damage from Shido's shots, better than someone like Menza or Birkenstock. If you've seen either of my other videos, I've alluded to the idea that the PXG match will be the battle of rivalries, such as Rin vs Isigi, Kunigami vs Shido, and Hiyori vs Karasu. So who will be Ikiguri's rival, since Shido is taken? Since I think every blue lock player will get a salary, then I think Ikiguri's rival will be Yuzu, which seems like a weird pick, but hear me out. I personally think that Yuzu is the worst blue lock player, and yes, worse than Ikiguri, he had one of the lowest rankings in the second selection, and got stomped 5-2 in his third selection match, where he didn't even make the U20 bench. Meanwhile, his teammate Hiragi managed to make an impact in a stomp, and make the U20 bench. Overall, Yuzu probably has the worst feats of the 35 Blue Ox survivors, and I think he's an appropriate rival for Ikiguri. I'm not sure how the interaction will behold, or if it will actually happen, but I think Ikiguri will perform better than Yuzu and doing so further increases his value. Another way Ikiguri could get an insanely high value is by stopping Loki. If both Rin and Shido score, then PXG can't score another goal, hence Loki won't score. And since every Master Strike has played, then Loki will likely play in the PXG match, but someone will need to prevent him scoring. Of course, it could be Noah, Isagi, and Kaisa, as they are the clear best players on Bastard, and most believable in stopping him. But knowing Ikiguri's luck, he may put himself in a situation where he either needs to use his militia foul or block another way to stop Loki scoring. If Ikiguri genuinely stops Loki, that will triumph anything he has ever done previously, and definitely warrant him being on the U20 world team. 
Overall, I think he will have an exceptional game as a future centre back, where he will perform well in Toshido and Yuzu, and that will warrant his future high salary, enough to make the top 23. The one benefit of him only playing in the PXG and Barca Munich match is the fact that it is the most important game in the NEL program. There's a high chance that both teams end up 3 0, and the final game will likely have the most action and watches, and so his value may get slightly inflated especially when they win and go undefeated. If we look at the salaries from the first week, such as Shido, who only has a value of 20 million, and compare it to the second week offers, you realise that a lot of the offers are significantly higher. For example, both Nico and Chigiri having a higher salary than Shido's first offer, and a character like Kunigami who scored the same amount of goals as Rin having a higher value. And with Rin and Shido being the clear top 2 previously, and knowing they had a break in the second week, then the inflation makes sense, especially as more blue lock players prove their worth, and investors are more comfortable in spending higher salaries for them. And so each following set of games, their values get higher, at an increasing rate, as the blue lock players show their worth. And so with scaling and inflation, then the fifth week and final game means that a character like Ikiguri can get a fairly high salary if he can perform well in that one specific game. Of the 46 remaining players, around 25 to 30 have actual relevance in the story, and so with an inflated value, and if Iguguri actually performs well and comes in clutch, then I believe he has a high chance of finishing rank 23 and making the team. And so that concludes my theory, and with that being said, Buddha be praised and thanks for watching, and subscribe if you haven't.